Hi, Karen. Hi, Cassandra. <laughs> how are you? I'm pretty good today. Yep. Good. Yeah. How about you? I'm pretty good as well. I took yesterday off from work. Oh, good. Yes. It's always so, nice to get a little rest. Yes, definitely. So I feel very, very rested. Good. Good. Okay. So we wanted to do a tarot reading on your business. Correct? Yes. Right. And it's about um, creating courses, basically, so that I have other ways, um, because I like teaching, for one thing, and two, because um, it's more sustainable long term to do a business when you're, you know, making money in ways besides just one on one consultations. Right. Because you need, you do need breaks from it every now and then. Even if you absolutely love doing it, it still can be, it limits your, your income. Right, just exactly. Money, unless you're charging a whole lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, you know, I'm not going to do, so. Yes, exactly. Yeah, so you're always trading money for time. Exactly, yeah. And I've been wanting to teach courses for quite a while now, and I'm teaching horary astrology right now. But I have ideas for a couple of other courses, too. Okay. And then, of course, you know, when you own your own business, business, there's 50 million things to do. And they all seem important. Like, you know, writing a book, doing courses, just doing more for the clients you already have. And let me see, what was the other thing? Oh, YouTube channel. Yeah, consistent marketing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm doing two of those right now. I have a blog and and I'm doing um, YouTube, though it's pretty new. Don't I don't have a lot of stuff on my site yet. Yeah, um, channel yet, but there's something there. You know, stuff on horary and stuff I do with other people and things like that. But anyway, the courses though that is I think is really where I'm going to get the most enjoyment. We're good. Okay. So what, what's the question around courses? Um, well, I guess what direction to go in? I've been, there's so many ideas, you know, being an Aries person, <laughs> I never have a shortage of ideas, but what I have is a shortage of time. And I really don't want to go like totally off in the wrong direction. Right. So. I just want to see what the cards have to say. Okay. I'm just curious. So you want to know you know? Like what, what kind of course would be the, the best course? or? Yeah. I okay. guess the what kind. And because that's always, I'm always going back and forth between, okay, do I, do I make a course for astrologers? You know, people who are learning astrology. Or can I make a course that anybody can take? as well as astrologers and it, it makes a big difference yeah it does so i'm always on that seesaw okay and I'm hoping that this would help i mean it would be easy for me to just do it for astrologers yeah but i still want to organize it a different way than just teaching a technique you know yeah like get around a topic you know like relationships or purpose or something like that though it gets okay. a little complicated because relationships it's not just one technique you know there are or you know something like fulfillment right also <laughs> venus right venus and the moon which would be a good topic um for sure and then I would just teach a variety of techniques, I guess, ways of looking at Venus and the moon in the chart. I've got a lot of decisions to make. So I'm just kind of open to whatever comes up. Okay. And I never get readings. I almost never get readings for myself. So getting a reading with you, because you've been doing tarot forever, and also because I know your chart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you are you have the planet mercury so strong the planet of business 
and I know that's something you like. Right. And so I know your chart. I know how good your device can be. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. Yeah. I'm flattered. I must say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. So I, um, all right. So let me see. So we want to know about what courses and who these courses are for, right? Yeah, I guess so. That's what it comes down to. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I'm going to shuffle the cards and then you just tell me when to stop. Okay. Okay, that sounds about right. Okay. I like that sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Some people say you shouldn't shuffle tarot cards like that, that it like upsets them or something, but. Really? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, let's find out about what what kind of courses would attract people because, I mean, it's like you may enjoy it, but if it doesn't attract people, then there's kind of no point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what kind of courses would attract people? And then, okay, so then, then let, and then I'm, I'm putting down three more cards about uh, who the audience is. Okay. okay. All right. So I'm going to, I have to get up to move my camera. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the cards or not. I, I hope this works. Yeah, I can you see, see it. Okay. They're, they're a lot, they're not as, um, I mean, you're going to pick it up and show it to me, right? Too? Yeah. Okay. And I think the, the light to it, it, see. Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Okay. All right. So this is what courses would attract people. All right, so we've got the Seven of Swords, the Four of Swords, and the Five of Wands. That is an interesting combination here. Swords? Yes. You know, so, so swords can, can deal with like, uh, you know, like depression and mental issues. Oh, really? Yes, it can deal with, you know, anxiety and conflict with people. Huh. And and the the five of the five of rods. Um, the when I see the five of rods, I tell people it's like um, you're gonna you're gonna butt heads with people, but it's not it's not it's not anything terrible or you know life threatening or anything. But it's like there's gonna be friction with other people. So kind of my inclination around this is it's kind of like how how to deal with like conflicts with people. Okay, so in other words, the Venus Moon fulfillment class. There how you to get more fulfillment. So if you have yes. a Venus or Moon, it automatically means conflict with people and, you know, a lack of fulfillment in relationships, which is, which really creates the quality of our life which is our, the quality of our relationships, right? Right. Definitely. I mean, otherwise it would be something about Mars, I would say, like being able to, I am planning to do something like that with another astrologer. We were going to do like a mini series kind of thing on um, YouTube and that it's all about Mars. Okay. Mars through the signs. Mars role in the Mars's role in enlightenment, etc. And and we were going to start doing that in May, but I'm not sure now about the timing on it. Okay. Um, be, just because of the other person, are you guys trying to get together? Or just well, he's got something really huge going on in his life right now. So. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I'm kind of waiting for, you know, I, I want him to to be ready. 
Right. Exactly. Is exactly. there any timing on that? Um, well, let me see. see. What would be the best timing for the, the course that you're talking about right now? Yeah. So, um, the, and I, I'm, I'm not real good with timing, I tell people, but I mean, I, I would say in, in several weeks. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And you know, the page here is telling you to, to listen to listen for messages and communications around it, but we have the King of Swords here. So the swords are like weeks. Is it, we're just in a, in a you know, okay. several weeks away. So I should start working on it then, because I told him that I would start writing about writing about it. Okay. And um, like writing about Mars through the signs and and then what role it might play i think that he's really more like the spiritual teacher and he'll probably want to add a lot about mars through the signs as it relates to spiritual practice you know enlightenment that kind of stuff so okay i'll start working on it then okay okay really <laughs> okay so now what about the, the cards over on the other side? What yeah, about and so this is this is like um, who who it should who you should teach, like you were saying, whether it's astrologers or more oh. everybody. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, so we have well we have two of the swords, so you have a decision to make. Decision to make here. Yeah. Um, and then we've got the world and the empress. So this is saying I, I really think this is highly creative. Oh, and so it's like employ your creativity because the, the world reduces to a three two is 21. So yeah. two plus one is three and this is three. And so it's like kind of like use everything, everything, you know, all your knowledge and stuff and put it all together in a creative way. And so, I mean, if I had to pick one, I would say this isn't anybody. Okay. You know, this would work. Because it's like kind of like through your creativity, it could work for anybody. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's not going to be, it's going to center on two planets, basically. And I'm still thinking about the Venus moon course. Um, and I'm not going to be teaching like entire techniques in order to be able to look at these two planets in a way that's actually helpful. Right. You know, like I'm not going to teach the entire Jaimini technique, for instance, just so we can look at those two planets or, you know, I guess I'm not, <laughs> I think what I should do is I should do some practice ones and figure it out that way. There you go. I'm getting pigs. Like yeah. maybe you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We can do a reading just on those two planets and using the appropriate Varga charts, the aspects and the house placements and see what comes from that. That could be fun. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, um, okay. So Mars first. Now I have another course too that I wrote out. It was amazing to me how quickly it came together actually, because it was not something I had in my mind that I've been thinking about for a long time. It just sort of came out and it is a life purpose course and, and workbook you know, where they would have a workbook and then we would go through everything in the chart that's related to purpose and career. And this would involve a lot of the Jaimini technique, but also some just regular, you know, a, a Vedic astrology, Parashara techniques, and I'd even bring other stuff into it too like, you know, numerology and, you know, some guided meditation exercises, things like that. 
So, so this spread is showing basically one course at a time. Is that what you're showing? Yes. How that works? Okay. Yeah. So that one first is the one that I need to put my energy into. The Mars one. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Now, okay. it's not just conflict. Is it also like fighting for something? Because, you know, Mars is the planet we use to fight for the life that we want and, and to fight the, for things that we believe in that, that matter. Yes, definitely. That's, what, that's the way I'm seeing it. I'm seeing this as it's like, okay, we have the, all this conflict and stuff that, like, might make you depressed or anxious or not trust people or, you know what I mean? It just, it's very upsetting. But it's like this card here, this is like, yeah, it's like you get out and you fight for what you want or you try to get to turn things the way you want them to turn. It's like with this card, things can be kind of crazy. Like it's like, you know, like I can see where it's like our lives are kind of like in a way out of our control. And it's like you're all you're always trying to time block and schedule and, you know, everything's like, oh, uh, so it's like, how how do I do that? How do I? go out there and fight for stuff that that I want that's important to me without like getting totally exhausted here with the four where I, I just have to just hmm. pull up and right go away for a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good direction to take it in, isn't it too? Yeah. So it's not just Mars to the signs and then Mars and enlightenment, but like how to really use Mars, especially if it's weak. Like look to see what its friends are and what other ways that you can do those things without, if your Mars is not really inherently strong, like through partnerships, for instance. Right. You know, yeah, partnerships where their Mars is strong. So, that, that'd be kind of like a cool service to like match people you know what I mean like yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah the thing is too is you don't want the other person's Mars to be so much stronger than yours so that's right. not a good partnership for, for exactly people. that's what I mean but that's kind of an interesting concept I, I think yeah about yeah. finding the right Mars partner, you know what I mean? Where it's like you don't have somebody that you're running over all the time. Exactly. And conversely, you don't have someone that's running you over all the time. Right, exactly. And yeah, and you know what's interesting is the person I'm going to do this this course with, <laughs> yeah. his Mars is exactly the same sign and the same degree as mine. Oh my God. He just has it in a different house. His is more. Yeah. Um, a more prominent house. Gotcha. His natural planet is the sun, and the sun is the other warrior planet, like the gotcha. sun Mars is the other. And so he is just naturally a lot more aggressive than I am. Yeah. But I'm the moon, so that's a good match with the sun. This right. Is, so it works well. We yeah. see well when we do stuff together. Um. So yeah, he's he's a lot more stubborn than I am too. <laughs> but that's partly because he's a guy, I think. Yeah. And because he's the son. Yeah. Okay. So no, that's really fruitful, and to start thinking about that, like, yeah, what would be a good match if you're? How do you figure that out? And if you're doing a like a business thing with someone. Mercury has to be decent too. Right. That's business. Yep. And you have to look at your seventh house in your birth chart. Because if you have a seventh house that and seventh house Lord, hmm, like for instance, my seventh house Lord is the moon and it's waning. I mean, not just waning, but waning, waning, waning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> almost, when it goes into the next sign, it joins the sun. So it's like it has to be short-term stuff. Like it can't be because it's in a 
Well, it's an immutable sign, but the seventh house is cardinal, which is short term. And it does seem to work better for me to do short term projects with people rather than like having a business partner, you know, okay. for every, in my life because yeah. it doesn't work out very well. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's interesting because I have a friend that she, okay, she's sun in Libra, moon in Aries. Um, oh, okay. and yeah, mm -hmm. so her seventh house is Aries. And so it's like she always has these relationship problems. And I, like, I, 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 you know, I don't know what to tell her. It's like, but since you bring up like short term stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah, it is. It is very short term. But you know what's interesting about when it's a cardinal sign? I just learned this recently from Ernst, and I just think it's great. And that is, um, because it's a movable cardinal sign, that person can make big changes. So like from one relationship to the next, the person that they had a relationship with can be completely different than the last one. Okay, okay. So it's easier for them to break long-term patterns, in other words. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and, they, and, you know, it depends on what else is going on in the chart, too, of course. Right, right. But... Like, for instance, it, I, my chart, I have mostly movable and mutable signs. The only thing I have that's fixed is the north node of the moon. That's it. But my husband, on the other hand, he has one, two, three fixed, three fixed planets. Right. So together, I'm able to do a lot more with him over long periods of time than if it were just me on my own. Yeah, because I tend to be too interested in too many things, and it's kind of hard for me to, yeah, you know, stay focused <laughs> yeah. long enough, you know, yeah. to really. Even though astrology has been a, I mean, a lifelong focus, but within astrology, you know, it's a whole world. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, I really think your your partnership stuff and your partnership perspectives are, are your strength. And I'm just saying that just from having talked to you now or before. I mean, I, whether it's romantic or not, it's like you seem to have a really good handle on relationships and partnerships. Studied about it an awful lot. And and my self-producer planet, my Atmakarika, is the seventh house lord. Okay. And it's in the third house of learning skills. <laughs> there we okay. go. Okay. That's been my job this lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Learn how to do it and then tell other people too. <laughs> right. Right. Well, um, okay. Um, I was just wondering if, if you couldn't put everything through like this partnership focus, like all these classes were somehow – you know what I mean? It's like partnership through Mars, partnership through Moon and Venus, partner. You know what I mean? Does that make any sense? Oh yeah, that's interesting. And then you chunk it down small enough because if you try to tell everybody all that all at once, do Mars and Venus and the Moon, and everything, people will be like, "Oh my God, what?" You know yeah. what I mean? Right, right. Huh. At first, I thought you were talking about like teaching it in partnership with someone. That would be fun. I do enjoy doing it with another person. Well, you can have different partners. See, that's the cool part. <laughs> you yeah. Stick with the same one. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, imagine that. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. Because you already have one, you might be able to come up with some other ones. Yeah. The horary, I, I am the one teaching it, but yeah. I do have, I do have a lot of live classes and there are students in there and some of the students are professional astrologers themselves. So uh, they bring, yeah, they bring some interesting things to it and we do often digress and talk about Vedic astrology too. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so... But that is that right now, that is the biggest thing I've got to focus on finishing it up. You know, so the horror you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
so that it's available and I want to make it available as soon as possible though I have a lot of videos to edit and some things to finish you know like cheat sheets and some tests and things like that okay hmm okay so it just seems like we keep like spinning our wheels here because it's like it all seems equally important which is what you said <laughs> at the beginning. So I know that the horary, I mean, I'm almost done with it. So it would be silly for me to go off doing something else before right. I finish that. So I'm right. gonna finish that. Yes. But um I it should be I should be done with it in a reasonable amount of time, you know, like I don't know, maybe a month or two at the most. And if I end up starting something before I'm completely finished, that's probably okay because I have to take into consideration the other person's schedule. Yeah. And so I'm going to go with whatever I can get. Um, yeah. I, you know, this is the thing. When, when you have your own business, I'm telling you, it's just so time consuming, all the things you have to do. Yeah. So I'm always trying to narrow my focus. And so, yeah, so those two things, that's my focus. Of course, as clients, as usual. You know, and I, you always have to be marketing. There's no way around that. Um, and then those two classes, one is almost, almost done. And the other one I'm going to do with a person. So another person. And then from there, maybe I'll get another reading with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that was a surprise to me. Okay. It was, it was a surprise to me. Really? Yeah, I was expecting it to say, oh, relationship stuff, of course. Oh. I mean, you know, like love and romance. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting that it's a more of a Mars thing. Mm -hmm. Kind of makes sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, you kind of teach what you what you most need yourself. Right. <laughs> there you go. And my Mars and Gemini is like, yeah, it's a real scattered kind of thing. And and, you know, it's been a lifelong struggle for me to really get and stay focused on one thing. Yeah. Um, and, but you know what, learning, to, learning astrology and learning about it has helped me a lot. It's just being conscious. It really makes a huge difference. Yeah. It truly does. So now I can see it when I'm starting to go off, you know, like, right. oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's kind of like reining myself in. It's like it's like my Mars is almost like a child. Yeah, I got. Yeah. Well, I can see that. Yeah, with Gemini. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you've seen parents where their kid is so incredibly active that they have to put them on a leash when they go. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that. It's like no, yeah. back here. I need you over here, and this is right. <laughs> Well, thank you. You're welcome. Is there, is there you have questions about anything else or? Um, let me see. Uh, maybe no, I don't know. I'm thinking anything. Can you? Is there anything that can give me like an overall view of? Oh, how about money? Let's ask about okay. money. Okay. Um, wow. But do, can it show like about when I will start having a more consistent flow of income? You know, so it's okay. not up and down and up and yeah. down. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna we're gonna shuffle again for that one. Okay. I'm a little afraid of that one. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So tell me when to stop shuffling. Okay. Okay, how about that? Okay. All right. All right, so when will the more consistent income come in? All right. So, all right. 
I think I should have asked this question. So, uh, <laughs> you got three major arcana cards. So this is like, this is a big deal. This is the big deal question. Okay. Uh, you got the death card. Remember last time you got the death card? Yeah. Um, and I forgot what it means exactly. Uh, in that, whatever context we were talking about, I think we were talking about the classes and I was saying you need to bare bones it. Like just get right. that. Just the, oh, okay. The minimum. The skeleton. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. Um, so, the, you know, the moon is, is, is like telling me right off. It's like, uh, we don't really know. And there, and there's, I, <laughs> and there's, you know, there's, there's emotional work behind it. There, you know what I mean? So it's like when you can get through the emotional work is when it, when it's going to happen. Um, right now, it's like you're taking steps. I call this the coming out card, the judgment card. So this is where you're like, it's like you're, you're coming out to, to who, like who you really are. You know what I mean? And it's like you're, you're, you're able to come out and go, hey, I'm Karen and I'm an astrologer and I do it this way and I think we should look at it that way. You know what I mean? It's like you have your own okay. process or, or whatever. You, you know what I mean? You're not just. Yeah. It's about becoming more visible and just being more transparent. And is, that, right. is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so, so you're trying to get here to the, you know, the, the four of, uh, I think this one came up last time too, where it's like, it's like you're successful there's a, there's stability in it because it's a four, you know, like you said. So that's where that's where you're trying to get to. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so it's like you've got to release some stuff with this with this this death card stuff that's not working for you. Oh, you know, and then you know, like and like I said, the moon is like this emotional work. So this can be even be like stuff from past lives or stuff you you've been doing your whole life. Like self sabotaging stuff, or just like you said, just getting distracted, and then you're like, "Oh my God, I just went five miles out of my way, and I didn't need to do that because I was okay. distracted by something." And then I, and then I'm like, "Oh, you know, whatever that might be." You know, it's possible that I may need to unsubscribe from some newsletters. There you go just because they do can tend to take me off to something that I might need someday. Right. <laughs> yeah. well, I, know I am going to need someday, but I'm like a long way off from it. Yeah. And so, you know, I take time and I listen to that stuff when probably I shouldn't be listening to that. Right. Be listening to just what I need to listen to for what I'm doing. Yes, exactly. Hmm. exactly and I've heard people talk about that too like when they write books and stuff they like totally disconnect from everything and they're like I don't care what anybody's doing or anybody's saying or what they're promoting I'm just like I just I just got to focus on this right now and I just cannot be yeah distracted by that isn't that true I, yeah. you know I think that's what I'm going to do then yeah that's that's what I can cut out that I I don't actually need I don't need that. Yeah. At least not now I don't. And yeah, it's kind of, it is a distraction. It yeah. really is. And I've spent time like listening to people's launches, you know, where they have these four videos and they have downloads and it's like all really interesting. And I like seeing how people are doing these things. But every time I ask a horary question, is this a good course for me to take now? The answer is always no. <laughs> right, right. It has never. Yeah. It's been. It's been yes one time out of like twenty. Wow. So that's a big message by itself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. See, and then there. That's that bare bones idea again. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, and I do overwhelm myself too. Like once I start writing out the course, and I'm like, oh God. And we can bring this into it and we can go there and we can, you know, la, 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 la. right. And then I'm overwhelmed. Right. Like, oh gosh, now I'm paralyzed again. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really kind of comical. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad you can laugh about it. 
See, and then you've got you've got the knight up here at the top, the knight the knight of wands. So it's just like you know, just act on your in, on your inspiration and what's most e exciting for you, and like you know, gets your heart pumping and your your blood moving and stuff. And okay. if it like if it's like you said, if it's like oh, this could be useful further down the line, well, that's that's not it. Yeah. No, I'm I'm gonna do that as soon as we hang up today. I'm I'm gonna go and subscribe to it. <laughs> so many newsletters. I know. Ridiculous. I know. So yeah, they're all very interesting people and I like them and I like to be, you know, a loyal subscriber and stuff because I don't want to bum them out, but it's not helping me right now. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. Um, yeah. There's no card in there we haven't talked about yet. No. The the no. moon one. That mm -hmm. one looks like. Yep. What the heck could that be about? More. I mean, the emotional stuff. Is this like, you're talking about like my mindset around money stuff? Yes. And uh, and a lot of times this the moon stuff. It it you know it can be like gener generational things or like stuff that gets passed through families. Hmm. You know, so a lot of times it could be stuff that maybe isn't even yours, but it's just there. So meaning, meaning, can I give myself permission to be successful even if my parents were not? Right. Kind of stuff or my family, like other yeah. people in my family. Yeah. Because there is, there is a lot of that kind of, there's a lot of extremes in my family. Okay people barely being able to stay off the street and then, you know, other people doing quite well. Wow. And so it's kind of hard to be, I don't know. I have just, yeah. let's say I have a few people in my life who would like nothing more than to be able to lay claim to anything that I do. And uh, yeah, so that's where that assertive Mars stuff comes in and says, nope, you do your own work. You right. get your own rewards. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, yeah. Okay, that was a really good reading, Cassandra. Thank you. Oh, well, you're welcome. I'm glad it was helpful. Very helpful. I never would have thought of tarot for business. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can use it for just about anything, really. Yeah. That's but, the beauty of it. Just like horror, I guess, with you. You can... Yeah, it's the same type of thing. It's the same divination, divination, you know, for the moment, but it's just using a different tool. Right. Um, and this is, tarot is very, you know what I like about tarot? I've been reading this book. I want to talk about this for a moment because okay. I, this is something else to the people listening. I think it's good for them to know this for, for your clients. I'm reading a book called Archetypal Imagery and the Spiritual Self. And it's techniques for coaches and therapists. And one of the main points that she makes in the book is that using imagery helps to open up the unconscious so that the ego kind of steps aside long enough for the unconscious to deliver its messages. That and was, yeah, that makes total sense. Is so, and, it, and it's all imagery and tarot. Yeah. So, you know, I thought that was really, I had never thought of it that way before. Right. So, no. Yeah. No, because I'll have people recognize stuff in the cards. They'll be like, oh my God, that, you know, they'll like recognize a person or they'll somehow be like, that reminds me of that situation. I mean, they'll just see it themselves. Right. Right. Exactly. And yes. And it's so, uh, there's, there hasn't been any false notes in this for me it's like no that's not really it this is all like well yeah of course it makes sense that the death card would come up again yeah, right. that's a that's a, a a recurring theme in my life i mean really on a daily basis i'm like okay what do i focus on today and just stay focused on that one thing today right uh it, it's really difficult yeah have you, have you ever heard of that book, The One Thing? Yes, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> it was one of the things I used to help myself. Okay. I was just wondering because I thought you could be like, my one thing for today. 
Well, you know, I have a friend, she's a coach, and we get together on a weekly basis and work together, basically is what we do. And she's always asking me, okay, Karen, that's a great idea, but where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> she yeah. goes, how far away is that from the money? Yeah. And that is such a good question because I never think of that. Right. Yeah. And... And then that causes me to reorganize things so that, well, yeah, I, I have to make a living. Gotcha. Yeah, you know what's interesting? I want to talk a little bit about that card in the middle because something happened recently. Yeah. Where I had sent an invoice to a client and, you know, it, they acknowledged that they got it. And then I sent another one. And I, in other words, when it came time for the appointment, they still hadn't paid. Yeah. And because I had already basically asked twice, I didn't want to ask a third time. Right. And I realized by not wanting to ask the third time that that was revealing, again, my hesitancy to ask for the money to feel like it was an okay thing to ask. Like it's just matter of fact, something you do in business. Instead, there was like all this stuff like, yeah, well, um, if you have to ask more than twice, then maybe you shouldn't work with this person. And really what it was, was just that reluctance that it came up with. I came up against my, I'm not sure what the right word for it is. I, I wouldn't say self-esteem or, you know, the value of what I do, but it does say that I need to be much more clear on the value of what I do so that it's not so hard for me to ask as many times as I need to. Right. You know, because right. he told me, he says, well, I thought that was a receipt. I, I thought I had paid it already. You see what yeah. I mean? Yeah, no, I got, you made up all kinds of stuff about it. That I did. Was there. I did. And, um, so it really pointed that out to me. I was like, oh, I thought I had worked through a lot of that stuff. But no. Yeah, there, there you like go. That. There you go. Yeah. Also doing the kind of work that we do, you know, I mean, doing this kind of thing for a living, the, the culture in general doesn't yet know the full value of it. Absolutely. So, therefore, they don't want to pay more than a certain price. It's like only people who really are excellent at, at marketing they, and also, you know, they write books and they have a constant presence and they're not afraid to go out there and say, okay, this is what I do. And there's no value judgment on it. You know, they're like, okay, I'm an astrologer. You know, they don't do that. <laughs> like, I'm an astrologer and this is awesome. <laughs> you know, they do well, they can charge a lot. Um, but yeah. It's, I guess you could say it's the shadow side of the, of the kind of work that we do. The right. medical field. Yeah. And there's a woman who does palmistry. She's amazing with her marketing. And you can tell she has a kind of a coach background. Because uh -huh. coaches, they, they're, they're taught that stuff from the beginning, right? Yeah, right. Gotcha. Uh, they can charge a lot of money for a course. Because of the perceived value, they really know how to put that out there, right? And she does too. And she, it's it's palm reading, yeah. But she's like, I admire her because the things that she talks about, it's all makes perfect sense to me. And she's not, you know, she doesn't come off as just a person who's like real slick and in, in sales. Yeah, you can see that she's truly sincere in everything she's saying and the value of it. And I'm like, yeah. wow. It'd be nice to be, you know, like that. Right. But it's a journey, so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I, hope this is, I hope this ends up being helpful to um, future business owners that you Yeah, me too. Me too. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one. Yeah. Yeah. And if you put it on, you can put it on your YouTube channel, right? Right. Okay, so there'll be people, other people who do this kind of work and people who, who value this kind of work. And they go to tarot card readers and astrologers. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much.
Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I'll check back in with you and see where you are with, okay. the, <laughs> with the course. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. And I want to take the horror aid when it's done. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. So. And let me know any classes that you come up with too. Okay. Like putting this together in, in like for business would just be pretty amazing. Yeah. I know. It's overwhelming. Like, okay, right it, away. It oh. is. I know. I'm just still trying to get my basic, like, this is how you read tarot course. <laughs> So, and that's a good one. I think it's yeah. always good to start with that. And somebody, yeah. a couple of people have asked me if I would do that too. Just, okay, how about just a simple beginning astrology course? Yeah. I'm like, that's actually hard. I mean, I think it's easier with cards. I mean, astrology is such a vast topic. It's like, oh my God, where do you even start? You know? But, you know, it, it is true. I guess it, it depends on how deeply you go into it. Yeah. But it's still the same basic things. You know, it's the signs, the planets, and the houses. Yeah. And that's what pretty much all astrology has in common. And it's just how well you understand those things that really determines how well you can do astrology. It's possible to do astrology only talking about the signs and the planets. Yes. The first reading I ever gave to someone was out of the ephemeris. Uh-huh. I just looked at her, at her day of birth. And looked at the planets, the signs they were in, and the aspects they made to each other. And yeah. she paid me. Right. Amazing. Right. Well, that's a good that's point. Really encouraging to me, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. And maybe, too, that's what the death card could mean, too. Also, maybe uh, a simple beginning. Right. Thing. Yeah. Right. Okay. I know. We're going to end this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, it was it was good to talk with you. It was good to read for you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Cassandra. All right. I want to tell everybody, Cassandra has a fantastic Mercury. It's exalted in the sign of Virgo, which is full of know-how, and being able to it's a blessed yoga, which out of all the success yogas is one of the yogas that has the highest level of success because it is so concrete and able in business. So thank you. Recommend it. <laughs> All, right. All right. Okay. Well, we'll get together again soon. And uh, thanks for joining me. Oh, sure. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.